Hello, welcome to EnviroTech's webinar, Empowering Country to See. My name is Paula Lancaster. I am the Assistant General Manager and Business Developer here at EnviroTech Education. I'm honoured to be hosting this webinar with Auntie Vi. Bulbanaka and thank you. My name is Violet Langan. I'm from the islands of Fiji and I've been in Australia for over 40 years working in community and I'm blessed to be part of um, Envirotech education um, because it's a passion of mine to empower our children uh, to find out what it is that they want to do and if it's uh, for the marine biology I'm for it because it empowers them to stay in their villages and work uh, in their own communities. Thank you. I would like to introduce you now to Pastor Michelle Tamway and she will do Welcome to Country for us. Hello everyone, my name is Michelle Tamway. I'm married to Pastor Tutom Tamway and my daughter is Eugenie Ball. And we would like to first acknowledge the traditional landowners of the, the countries and the lands upon which we are meeting and gathering the past, present and the future. I would like to pay my respects to all the elders who have gone on before us and have encouraged us to keep the ways of old, to preserve the land and the and the sustain the life of the uh, creatures that God placed on this planet. I believe that God has left a plan in his book, the Holy Bible, to actually tell us how to care for and become excellent custodians over the land. I believe that there are fragments of this understanding left in the indigenous nations around the world that if we study their ways of doing things that we will find that they align with the word of God and that God has a plan and a purpose for each and every one of us to play our part in sustaining a great future for the next generations to come. I believe it's important for the children to hand on the knowledge that is required to sustain the world as we know it, to improve on what we've done in the past by making mistakes, to restore the reef and the rainforests and the, and the, the plains and the lands where people have come in and abused the land and taken everything from it. But God has a plan for us to bring restoration back to those areas and to transform it back into what God designed it to be. I look forward to working with EnviroTech in the future and wish you all well. First speakers are Shelley and Nadab and I believe you interviewed them Paula. I did, they're in Israel and so I was able to connect with them on Teams. We had a great discussion about why they decided to develop, to write the Marine course. Hello everyone. Welcome, we're here to talk about EnviroTech's Marine course. EnviroTech wrote the very first Marine qualification for VET in the entire world. It is a Marine Habitat Conservation and Restoration course. With us here today, we have Shelley, the CEO of EnviroTech and the founder. Welcome, Shelley. Thank we you. also have Professor Nadav Shashar, who is one of our key consultants. I'd like to ask them to briefly introduce to you who they are. Shelley? Thank you, Paula, and thank you everyone for joining Enviotech Indigenous Marine Conservation Leadership. My name is Shelley Benkiat. I am Australian-Israeli, currently based in Israel, and really very grateful to have you all here. Hello, my name is Edgar Shashar. I'm a professor of marine biology over at Ben Gurion University in Israel, in Eilat, at the very northern tip of the Red Sea. My research works on uh, restoration of marine habitats, mainly coral reefs, but not only, and also about the rehabilitation and how to integrate and have people working in it in different places of the world. Thank you all. Thanks, Nadab. I know from working at Envirotech how amazing this course is and how much it has excited so many people. What I'd like you to share with everyone today is what made you write this course? I mean, no one has ever written a VET certificate course for marine restoration and, and um, conservation. I'll go for that. Um, for me, it all started in an case where I was hired by a company to go and do a project. 
And the project was very simple monitoring, just saying in some habitat how much seagrass was and what fishes were. So we went out. We went out, the boat operator had a PhD. The uh, assistant boat operator had a master's. The cameraman had a PhD and the guy who was diving with him also had a PhD. The supervisor was myself, I'm a full professor. Now, the old damn thing, sorry for the wording, is simply photographing long transects, putting a line and taking it and seeing what's in it. We just photograph it. And it turned out that, well, we academic kind of have an hold on it. Now, it was nice because the company paid a lot of money for this thing. <laughs> Really, really, they paid through the nose because everybody had a PhD. But there is it's no like for a that. joke, isn't it? Was it? Ridiculous. How it was many PhDs? Ridiculous. How many PhD people do you need to put a line in the water? Exactly. So you need three at least and two on the boat. Now there is no reason for that. There are boatmen which are much better than us. We don't learn how to run a boat uh, in the university. There is no course about that. Mm -hmm. Now, there are people that are very good in uh, working with boats. There are people that know the habitat much better than we do. There are people that know how to see things, which, which we don't even see. Mm -hmm. And they do it much better than us, but they still are blocked. They can't do these things. So the idea for me was to train people which don't go all the way to having a PhD or even a master's or a bachelor's and just get them to do the work much better and most likely much cheaper for the companies. Okay, so if I can interrupt you for a moment. Shelley, what are your thoughts on why you were inspired to write this course? Envirotech have been leading in the area of environmental management and sustainability in the vocational education sector. When we say vet, sometimes it is uh, confused to be something of looking after animals, but the vocational education sector is about training in a very practical way. It is easy to understand when we think about carpenters, they do not go to university. It is even in, it, easy to understand when we speak about conservation land management. So you would imagine a reforestation project. Of course, it is very important to have the scientists to design develop two species but at the end of the day some people need to dig holes in the ground put the plants and uh, pressurize the irrigation systems and those are the exact type of tasks that are predominantly be uh, relevant to the vocational education sector and when we started to look at the severe effects of uh, climate change and what is happening at the marine environment we could identify that there is a workforce that is um, just missing for the marine. It exists in conservation land management, in forestry. However, the marine was not uh, uh, given that opportunity for the vocational education for those exact tasks that Professor Nadav has mentioned. And it became mm -hmm. a, a life mission and a vision to actually um, uh, observe what are the missing components of the vocational education sector and to start uh, embedding much more of the marine and, and more sustainability and um, capacity building um, units of components that can empower communities to take action. Uh, Shelley, just in the um, what we've been discussing when we've been developing this course and, and implementing it, I know that we're not saying at Envirotech that university degrees are not important. Of course, the university degrees are very important and the level of specialities. What we are actually coming to feel is a gap that is a bridge between entry-level tasks that can be starting to even be taught at the school and with the fishermen communities and to build those bridge that are STEM studies, however, at the very practical hands-on, like a builder underwater that does understand the biology but to a certain extent and focusing on our backyards where scientists continue to develop their capacity and their understanding to a much more uh, complex level. Yes, university levels are, are degrees are very important, but let's see about when you want to go into the university. And I tell you for myself, I prefer to have a student that actually knows what he's talking about. 
And why is he going there? Uh, I usually have lots of students, like 150 students, 175 students per year. Um, well, some of them want to go to med, pre-med, and so on. And so they know what they want. Most of them have wide eyes, and the first uh, semester, they want to do all marine biology. The second semester, they want to do horses, because our verte vertebrate uh, teacher is very good, and he does horses. Then they want to do plants and keep on going. So students that actually come with knowledge and focus, and they actually have some experience, are much better students. They are much more focused. And also, they easily apply uh, their studies into the real world. They actually know when we talk, teach them biochemistry, well, OK, that relates to this and this, and so on. And photosynthesis, well, corals, yes, there are zeros and there are algae in there, and that's why we need photosynthesis, why it's important. And it keeps on going this way. So they become much better students, and it's much easier for them to, to apply and to actually get into the university afterwards when they come with some experience in the field. That's so true. You know, as a teacher myself, I know that to get people to do um, and then to learn or vice versa is the most amazing way for people to actually understand. Um, I'd just like to bring us back to that whole concept that, you know, this is about marine and indigenous. And I know one of your key phrases, Shelley, is about bringing the fishermen to the sea. Would you like to expand on that? Yes, thank you so much. As we wrote the courses, one of the key statements at the very beginning of the course is that because marine biology is um, predominantly set only in university degrees, then there are entire populations that are being, um, that don't have access to the marine conservation restoration employment because they do not uh, have the degrees. And this is in Australia, the indigenous islanders that are living in communities which are remote, they do not have access to university degrees, and as well the method of studying that we mentioned is very theoretical and less hands-on, is uh, culturally um, not suiting the learning style. So the moment that the degree entrance is uh, the only way to enter the marine industry, then indigenous people that live on the Great Barrier Reef or in other marine environments, they have by their heritage a deep connection to the sea. They know from their ancient culture a lot of uh, dream time stories on what happened to the natural environment in cycles and so on. And all this knowledge, ancient knowledge, cannot actually um, let them to enter the education sector because before these courses there was no vocational education. So many of them do study conservation land management but um, marine biology for the fishermen was a concept that was uh, enabling people to actually connect their passion, their heritage to their vocational outcomes and hopefully jobs. Yeah, and I know that the audience today are the Indigenous and we welcome you and we're so grateful that you've joined us today. Well, actually, I should say, excuse me, Indigenous and Islanders. It's lovely to have you here. Um, why, Shelley? Why are we doing this? Why are we having this webinar? Why are we talking about bringing it to the sea? How how are we going to do that? Can I so jump? Go oh, ahead, Dad. Sorry. I would like to jump in. Um, in a way, um, for me as a researcher, having someone who knows the sea and knows the land is much better, because the results that are going to be obtained would be much better. Um, I won't just go over the asset. I don't have to teach them how to identify fish. They actually know what fishing is about. So when we do want to do accounting and an assessment or the stock assessment, well, it's easy. They know how to do it. Um, how to grow mangroves? Well, if you grow, live around mangroves, then you know where, where they grow, what they need, and things like that. And if you want to do a beach restoration, it would be a good idea if you actually know what the beach looked like some time ago. Otherwise, what would you restore to it to? And usually it's for photographs. That's what we usually do. So having people that actually have a connection to the area will give much better outcomes. And that's from my point of view. Now, from their point of view, it's their point of view, and I won't go into that because I don't know it. But 
as somebody who wants to have the work done, I much prefer to have people that actually have access and have knowledge of the habitat. And I've seen what was and what is now. And I want to take the opportunity to share our concerns to what has been uh, happening in uh, North Queensland as we're seeing bleaching. And we know that there is a whole community of indigenous people that have been watching these um, year after year, deterioration of marine environments, which are life support system and that are producing um, not only food, but as uh, Professor Nadav mentioned, oxygen and uh, a lot of other essential uh, services for humanity. And as we have been watching and observing these phenomena accelerating, it is very important that the people that actually live the closest to the reef will be able to be part of uh, not only monitoring and not only uh, conservation, but the next line that we have to take is restoration. And this is really interesting because in Australia, uh, similarly to other countries, conservation is something that is applied. However, restoration is a very um, complex activity that is um, at the heart of what has to really happen yet. Well, I'm conscious of time. Um, I obviously, from my perspective, would love to say, you know, people watching and people not watching, if you can spread the message to them, we want you to come on board. We want to work with you. We're so excited about what this has to offer. Um, and I'll just ask Nadav and then Shelley to, to sum up with their final thoughts. I see these courses as a way of breaking this glass ceiling that we see all the time that actually prevent people that, act, that are connected to the sea to be engaged in preserving their own habitat or the places where they actually live on one hand. And on the other hand, as a way of getting the work better, faster, and more efficiently, because uh, you can have a much larger workforce. You can have people that are ready to go whenever, wherever you want them to. You don't have to wait for somebody from the university like me to come up and do an assessment and so on. Well, there are people that actually know what to do on the spot, uh, which is an improvement. So from that point of view, I see that these courses actually uh, not only provide some benefit, but they also um, are benefit to people who take them, or significant benefit to people who take them, but also they are uh, very useful for the environment itself and will allow us to better stewardship of the marine environment. Thank you, Nadal. I would like to finish with um, a little bit of a different philosophical approach, talking about love, talking about our love to the natural environment and actually connecting as well to tomorrow's event. So tomorrow we have another webinar and the webinar tomorrow is about uh, environmental management from a philosophical, spiritual, point of view and our commitment on a spiritual level. Tomorrow we are going to even consider whether the environmental problem is a spiritual problem. And if so, whether we need some spiritual tools to assist looking after the natural environment. So I would like to say that these courses allow us to understand better and appreciate as well the natural environment, the amount of years it takes to actually evolve the services that we are depending on so it's not only the trees produce oxygen, the marine environment produces oxygen. And so the love that we have, not only for us humans, but to the creatures that are part of the sea and the marine environment that support us and understanding their values and how to support them and making it passion, uh, occupations. And I think that the greatest thing of these courses is that they have been really provoking people to be passionate. Uh, I like to call environmental heroes and connecting to the sea on, on, the, on a multi-dimensional level, which is of course the, um, the science and our gratitude for the indigenous people and for tomorrow's event, as we acknowledge and understand the value that indigenous people bring in their um, spiritual approach to the natural environment and the sea, is something that science has been uh, in many uh, areas lacking to present. So thank you so much for your participation and for um, taking part in the webinar. Oh, my God.
take away from that was just so awesome. Thank you, uh, Professor, for um, saying that, you know, it's better to employ people that live by the sea because they were born to do this and they have uh, inbuilt skills and traditions that we could not train. It's an innate understanding of the sea and what it entails to be um, children of the sea. And so the younger we start, the better. That's why I'm involved in um, with in Envirotech. It is. It's very exciting by, and we're excited to be working with everyone as well. We'll cross now to our marine lead trainer, uh, David Lennon, and he'll share a bit more detail about the course. Hi, David Lennon, Head of Marine at Envirotech. I just wanted to spend a couple of minutes talking about our Marine Habitat Conservation and Restoration course and what it actually includes. What does it actually cover? Now, you can write to us and we'll give you a nice brochure. And in this brochure, um, it covers a whole list of the different topics that are covered in the course. But I just wanted to point out from the, um, from the outset that this course was designed by experts. Um, some of us with 30 plus years experience in the field of conservation and restoration. And we said, what, what's required to make a good graduate, to make a good employee in conservation and restoration activities? And we put this course together. So it covers, it's unique. Let's face it, it's the only one of its kind in Australia, in fact, the whole world that's accredited. So it does cover some unique subjects, but let's have a look at some of them that are covered. And we start with some fundamentals, such as conducting um, photography, and that's on land and underwater. Because in the marine environment and with marine projects, we are taking photos. We need to document what's there, what isn't there, impacts that happened. Um, we need to be able to take pictures underwater on land. We need to take pictures for identification purposes because um, sometimes we're out there in the field and we can't identify a specific plant um, or a coral, for example, or a fish. Um, we need to get a good picture of it. And there's tricks to getting a good picture underwater that we teach. Um, and then we bring it back to the various experts and we find out exactly what the, um, what the species name is. Um, some other topics that are covered are provide information on coastal marine projects. Um, we do emphasize quite a bit on presenting information, putting information together that's clear to different stakeholders um, of different types. Because with marine projects, conservation and restoration projects, we've got to be able to communicate to a range of different stakeholders involved. So we've got to learn how to put information together that's understood by a range of different stakeholders. So we cover that. Take measurements of individual corals. Participate in the coastal dunes restoration. Um, take part in mangrove conservation projects. So we, we get very hands-on in actual conservation um, activities, restoration activities. Participate in planning marine environmental assessments. Um, when a project is going to happen, it's important to understand the nuts and bolts of what's involved in assessing um, what the impacts are, what they might be, what they actually are, um, what they're going to be. So there's the construction phase of an environmental project that we talk about, and then there's the operation phase of a project and the impacts that um, those different phases might have. Perform quadrat sampling. So there's a range of ecological tools, survey techniques that we use as scientists to identify what's there and how many of them are there. And we use quadrats and we use transects, something called a transect, which is basically a line. Often it's with a tape measure, so we can measure how far we are along the tape measure and where we're taking the sample. And then we use a quadrat, which is a square of different sizes, and we count um, the species, the individuals, the plants, the animals within that particular quadrat. Respond to emergencies, not likely. But just in the unlikely event that there was an emergency that happens, and let's face it, we've got to take care of um, workplace health and safety, especially working in the marine environment, um, because often things don't go to plan when working with the sea. And we need to be able to take care of emergencies. So we do cover health and safety, extremely important. Use tools to carry out basic tasks in marine conservation work. There's a number of different tools, everything from a camera, GPS, drone, um, underwater drills. There's a range of different tools that we cover and how to use them. So yes, it's hands-on. There is some theory and that theory is um, covered by online sessions 
and face-to-face -face sessions um, every 10 weeks. So the online sessions are recorded. So if you happen to miss one, um, not a problem. You can watch the recording. We also have supporting videos with a lot of footage spliced into the videos to make it more interesting and interactive. So there's a range of different ways to learn this course. And again, we've designed it. We've, this isn't for scientists. This is for the for the just the general person. You know, it doesn't even matter if you haven't finished high school. We've designed this course to be really easy to understand and learn. Um, and that's that's the key, I think, behind this, because our goal is to get more conservation and restoration skills into more um, into more hands out there, because we've got the scientists that design restoration conservation projects, design the species that and you know where the species are going to go, what's going to be planted where, um, but we need that troops. We need the troops on the ground that are actually going to do the work in um, protecting marine habitats and conserving and restoring marine habitats, and that's where you come in. Um, we'd love to hear from you. Um, you can, you know, you're welcome to get in touch and contact, um, talk to someone like myself or one of the other trainers or any of the other staff. Um, ask us any questions that you've got about the course, um, about job opportunities. Um, there's there's a huge amount of support on doing these courses. We've got a we've got an IT team um, that helps you with the IT side of things. Um, and then we've got um, course support staff, um, almost 24-7. I won't say we are um, exactly 24-7, but seven days a week. If you've got a problem or got a question um, with one of the homework assignments or any of the course material, you can just get in touch with us and somebody will be, you know, somebody will be able to help you out. So thank you. Thank you for your attention. And um, yeah, we'd love to hear from you if you're interested in the course. Thank you very much and take care. Understanding and knowledge um, being used in a practical way where the children can actually have fun and learn as they do. And I can tell you, Vi, they're certainly having a lot of fun and they're really um, excited and engaged. And I think it's also because we're out in nature, you know, it really, really um, it warms the soul to be out with nature. Uh, we're going to cross now to Pastor Titum. Pastor Tidham has experience every day engaging with youth and some of them disengaged. I believe he's originally from the Torres Strait. Yes, he is, but he uh, works in Ingenue. And so we'd love to hear his perspective. Hi, everyone. My name's uh, Titom Temoy. I'm also known as Pastor Titom Temoy. I'm a, a religious leader for our movement in the local area of Torres Strait and Northern Peninsula area, uh, also known as N Park. And uh, I've been 16 years as a superintendent or regional leader for this area, uh, working under the covering of the Assemblies of God or Australian Christian Churches. This area is known as Ingenu. My com local community is Ingenu. It's up in the Cape York on the west coast of Cape York. We're about roughly about 36 kilometers from the tip of Australia. We, since settling here, I've seen the evolution that have taken place or the places changed from just a village or a smaller community to now nearly a township. Our population is about 250 or 300 people that residing here in this community. And it's a mixture of, mixture of our cultures and mixture of people the Torres Strait Islanders and the Aborigines, and we also got uh, non-Indigenous as well that are living here, but very small percentage. Streets have changed, even the vegetation have changed, uh, planting methods have changed. Today only minority now that plants the vegetables and fruits now that have been brought into the land are training into the land because a lo local people, have, it's d died out, and shops are more important now than a home garden, I would say. One of the important things through our cultural upbringing was our parents taught us that we must connect to the land and we must care for the land and make sure that there's a, 
working together in harmony with the land. The second one is about the sea. We only get what we need from the sea. We don't take a, a lot out. And in our a sea, we don't hunt in one area. There are several or eight locations that we hunt every month. And th therefore, we don't uh, outfish uh, in one area or certain areas. There is a management plan of how we manage our resources, both on sea and land. You just cannot take anything out uh, without, or over, overtaken out from the, from the sea. Uh, I just thank, thank the authorities as well, and the traditional owners of the land to make this management plan so that it, it can be, it can, the resources can last for generations and generations. We don't want to just read from a book, this was the animal that was here one time, it's extinct now. That's, that's a no-no. In our community itself, the younger people have no work, no uh, very limited training. Some of them don't want to be trained because there are so many things that are happening and I think it's good if we can try and work in a, train our young people. We have My Pathways and they're only limited. Then we have a, a, a dropout from the school. They don't want to go into school anymore. In our community, there are so many young people that are working without jobs or anything like that. If we can uh, work together to try and bring understanding, and the important part is training them. The Envirotech uh, training us. Uh, maybe even the land, traditional landowners, they come in with the cultural knowledge and training our young people as well and, and bringing understanding and uh, to our young people because a lot of our young people, they like two things. Some of them don't like gardening, but they like diving. Every young people here, diving is one of the biggest thing. Even nursery management, they like to do practical work. They like to uh, have their lessons underneath a tree. If education is brought in, educate them about the sea, diving, proper diving way, proper diving school into our region. It will really empower our young people because they love diving, they love sea. Uh, in, the, in the afternoons or the morning when the tide's coming in, you would see them right along the coast, right along the waterline. They can go further than just walking along the beach. They can run their own companies, own diving schools. We've got tourists up here. Tourists come every year. We have so many tourists. And, but there is no diving experience here for them. This will benefit them. I know this will benefit them because the local boys not only trained, in the diving, they will also train them, giving the tourists and them in a local knowledge, uh, uh, not only of the sea, but under the sea and above the sea, and in different ways uh, throughout diving. Not only that, but we can extend that to a, to a training centers down south, different training centers, and they can come up and, and also be part of this program or part of this uh, input into the communities and the younger people of the communities. I think it's important now that we look beyond. I can only talk for the indigenous community of where I'm living at Ingenu and the NPA. This will benefit our community. We do not have any of these at the moment. We do not lack training, but the local people doesn't attend unless they are comfortable with the people who are teaching and us to see a local leader standing in the front together with other leaders to do the training. If there is no local leader, our people are very selective. They will not. They won't feel uncomfortable. They will feel uncomfortable by sitting there. There must be a local face, local role model, for them to connect to the, to the training. To get these projects, we need a, a funding or a grant support, educational support especially, and we need a grant support to help us. And we would like to see that not only from the government, but also from the local mining. We've got a couple of mining uh, that links to us, and this will help us. To achieve the vision. After currently, we are engaged uh, with the uh, Envirotech, which will bring understanding and which will bring training and teaching to our people. And uh, I, be I believe that this will really benefit, not only benefit, but it will also grow and see uh, results and greater results in future. Not only that, but others around our surrounding areas will begin to see the fruits of the work or what, what, what we have done together the government in assistance, the training that provided to us by Envirotech, and also the indigenous people and the, the community people itself that are engaged in, uh, we will see a, 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 a greater, greater result, because we need each other to see this happen.
Well, it was great listening to Pastor Titum. I really look forward to the day when I can meet you face to face. I can just see this, you know, spreading as we train um, people to become trainers in their own communities. Yes, because Envirotech's not saying, let's go in and teach you the courses. We actually have a different approach. Yes, and it's for the people, by the people, and it's so exciting because if it's not ground level, it will not be able to reach their people. They know how to get to their people better than us. Mm. And we're going to cross now to Violet and Paula because I actually went up and visited Vi uh, and interviewed her up there to give her perspective. So whilst this seems a bit funny, we're now going to cross to Paula and Vi. Bye, thanks for inviting me for a cuppa. Oh, awesome. <laughs> Would you like to just uh, share with us who you are? Ah, what can I tell you? <laughs> um, I'm originally from Fiji. I've um, been out here for over 40 years. And um, I'm a grandmother. I love children. I'm a mum. And I've been involved in community engagement and working for the people basically all my life. I work with uh, children, mostly uh, youth uh, in the disengaged space. Mm -hmm. Well, studies have found that uh, children that you know, know where they come from, uh, working with the sea and the land, heal. And it's two-pronged. Uh, also, I come from Fiji and we own an island. The ramifications of global warming, but actually mismanagement and not being able to uh, help restore um, our, you know, natural habitats was what um, drew me. And just um, make people aware of, uh, you know, why we put on this planet. We are supposed to take care of it and take care of ourselves. And so it's holistic and to be working in this space is an honor and a privilege, especially with our Aboriginal um, landowners and elders and the um, people. They have a rich culture. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're still discovering so many things that they used to do. They're the first uh, original people to make uh, netting for the fish, you know, habitats for the eels, how they protected their environment and we need to, to work with them uh, in, you know, this uh, certificate courses that we have because they have the knowledge. Mm. I believe most of the, uh, you know, even the stolen generation, some of their records, but kids innately, they will really love uh, the sea or the land. And so if we can um, connect them back then they will heal themselves but they will also be wonderful soldiers I call them to um, help you know restore the land I really believe um, it's a combined effort in the seven spheres of influence not only in education but also in the sporting field uh, you know the land will always be here and so really they um, when you take ownership of that it's a combined effort because we know the ramifications of not passing down that knowledge there's a um, we don't pass the baton on or we don't train up our children to know what it is that um, they will put on this planet yeah. for even our Australian um, brothers and sisters in fact man we got 219 different nations here in in Logan alone we believe it's God that put us here on this planet and we need to take care of it. It's found in every uh, text, even in the Quran, uh, in the uh, holy books of the Sangita, all of them, they have a, a God that says for us to take care of the earth and each other. And so we are all need to do a better job. But how do you do that if you aren't being taught? Mm. And so we've got to really get practical I really believe we've got to start earlier. We do. And what we are reaching out for is um, what we've been um, trying to get funding for and also wanting to do is to train the Indigenous mm -hmm. so that they can empower their communities. So what project are we looking at at the moment with um, Fraser Island and some of the other communities? 
I'm really passionate about this because they're people that live off the land. Um, you know, they're fishermen. And wouldn't it be great to train them? They've already got the skills, but actually put them on a pathway plan where they will be able to implement both sides of academia, but also their, their knowledge. And we don't just train them and, you know, walk away. Walk away. We train them to become trainers. Mm -hmm. And for me, that is, you know, actually training people of change because we've got to change the way we think and change the way we do things. And so it's empowering them, first engaging, then empowering, and then we equip them to look after their whole communities or they say their, their mob or their country. We all have an obligation to take care of our planet. And so if you want to come on board, we'd love to have you. Um, because if we the people don't look after what God has given to us, you know, we, we hear the ramifications, we've had so many global warming and all of this, it's time now for action. Mm -hmm. Vi, you inspire me. Thank you so much. <laughs> Wonderful to be here, and I just thank God for this privilege of working at Envirotech um, and just sharing what a wonderful opportunity we have to help heal ourselves in the land. Very thank grateful, you. thank you. Okay. <laughs> okay. Oh, no, you know, it says train up a child in the way he should go, and when he gets older, he will not stray far from it, and so. Because we're in the starting end, I want to introduce Sanders. He's actually from the other end, you know, from university and coming down to vet. How awesome is that? Hi, Sandra. How are you today? Good. How are you? Paul? Good. Thanks for joining me. Uh, would you be able to let our um, audience know who you are? So my name is uh, Sandra Sheffers. Um, I am a marine biologist. I have been uh, studying and working in the marine biology field for the last 26 years. I've got a PhD and a Master of Science in uh, Marine Biology and Ecology and I also have worked as a senior lecturer uh, for 13 years. At the moment I am uh, started work uh, for Envirotech. Oh, that's interesting because Envirotech is a vet, like it's an RTO with uh, vet qualifications. So Why have you gone from a university to now working for an RTO? I believe that um, the vet sector has a lot to offer to, uh, to students. Um, I have been in academia my whole life and when I looked up the, uh, the vet sector, I think there are so many fascinating uh, points uh, on this. I'd love to work with uh, um, younger students and I believe that uh, Envirotech have uh, developed a fit, uh, magnificent uh, course. Yes, how did you feel when you saw, like we have developed the very first marine conservation restoration certificate course and prior to this you had to go to university. So how did you feel when you saw this course? Well, I was very excited because I, I looked up all kinds of uh, um, subdivisions within this course, all the, all the, uh, the new units you have developed. Uh, from core restoration to planning for environmental uh, impacts to planning for uh, conservation and uh, restoration uh, projects and I think that is fantastic and Paula I have to tell you what I really really like uh, with this uh, certificate is that it's very hands-on mm -hmm. learning it's this, so exciting yeah, you know yeah. i remember a few weeks ago and the students did diversity enhancers mm -hmm. and so like building these you know houses to put under the water out of concrete and, and you know i'm not a marine biologist but mm -hmm. i was just blown away to think we can do something to bring back fish life and plants university degrees are fantastic mm -hmm. they are wonderful and they're needed for a particular um skill set and a particular area what do you see are the differences between the two and the advantages and disadvantages between them? I will compare it with uh, uh, the entrance degree, which mm -hmm. is a, a Bachelor of Environmental Science, for instance. Mm -hmm. That is three to four years okay. uh, in, in time. The Certificate of Envirotech is only one year. Mm. Um, the other major uh, uh, difference is 
after uh, this uh, a bachelor's degree at the university, mm -hmm. it is mostly theoretical knowledge what you have done right? mm -hmm. at, uh, at EnviroTech is um, for these, this certificate is also really good for Pacific Islander communities, for indigenous youth Sand to go youth, into, so the, um, yeah. in, into the environmental protection uh, uh, work and I think that is that is really great. And you are so right, mm. and that's um, our main focus of the um, webinar today is about the fact that we have this qualification that is about the guardians of the sea, the indigenous and the islanders. So, how do you see that this course is going to excite them? Well, I think EnviroTech is already um, in consultation with Aboriginal uh, communities and asking what their knowledge is about uh, their specific land where they, where they uh, uh, reside and then building that into the uh, um, certificate. Um, so I think there is a whole lot of uh, consultation with the indigenous community as well. I think that this is uh, uh, one of the first uh, um, uh, certificates um, which are really building in indigenous knowledge uh, within the marine uh, habitat conservation and restoration uh, mm. uh, certificate. That's fantastic. So finally, mm -hmm. um, what would be your last bit of advice to people about this course? I think if you are passionate about uh, about the environment, if you really want to make a difference with climate change, we really want to protect the little bit of great environment and ecosystems uh, what we still have, you should do this certificate and I believe then that, that you can make a real difference. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much Sander, really appreciate your time. Thank you so much Paula. Yes, well, I've been very privileged. I've been uh, getting around interviewing different people and I really enjoyed interviewing Sanders. And it's so, so awesome to get somebody from the university come down and want to teach the next generation of budding um, youth and students that want to take that education pathway and have people that, that know what they're talking about to help them through that. And that's what we provide at Envirotech. Yes, and that pathway is VET, which is Vocational Education Training. We're going to cross now to Tiffany. She's one of our marine experts from the United Emirates, and she's going to discuss VET in a little bit more detail. Hi, my name is Tiffany. I am a conservation specialist and GCC market lead for Envirotech International. Within the GCC, or more specifically, the United Arab Emirates, we are incredibly lucky to be surrounded by ocean. Our oceans are teeming with marine life that is able to survive and thrive within the harsh conditions of this marine ecosystem and surrounding environment. Within the United Arab Emirates, seasonal temperature ranges are quite extreme. The sea surface temperature of the ocean can be as cool as 16 degrees Celsius in winter and as warm as 36 in the summer. As a result of these conditions that characterize the region, many marine ecosystems, as well as the variety of species that inhabit them, have had to adapt to be able to survive within this climate. One of the most important uh, aspects of looking after our unique marine ecosystems within the United Arab Emirates is focused on restoration and conservation measures. So within these extreme environments, it's very important that when bleaching events occur with our corals, for example, we are ready and prepared to initiate conservation projects that will restore our reef beds too close to their prehistoric state. In order to restore coral reef beds, it's really important that individuals engaged in projects have a background knowledge or understanding of corals themselves. More so than this, it's also important that anyone engaged in this kind of work has hands-on practical experience that will enable them to enter the water and perform conservation activities proactively and safely. Generally, there are two ways to gain the skills that are required for coral conservation and restoration activities. 
The first is through the traditional stream of university. So by completing your bachelor, your master's, or perhaps even your PhD, you will gain the relevant theoretical knowledge that is required to perform conservation activities. Understandably though, these pathways often take extended periods of time, so many individuals that are involved in the conservation and restoration sector will gain their hands-on practical experience through work placements. But as we know, it's quite difficult to find placement on conservation projects without having pre-existing experience. So what then is the best way to gain the experience you need for a conservation career? This is where vet education is quite unique. So VET or vocational education and training programs are designed to run for a year to two years, bridging the gap between high school and university. More so than the decreased time that it takes to complete these accreditations, they're highly specialized and focused. So for example, if you have a look at a VET accreditation like the Marine Habitat Conservation and Restoration Program, this course is specifically designed around coastal ecosystems so that includes the ocean, as well as the beaches and the coastal dunes, providing all the theoretical knowledge that is required to embrace conservation projects. But not only this, more than obtaining the base or foundational knowledge that's required, such programs also embody or are comprised of vocational work placement training. Now what this means is that the individual or the student is able to get hands-on experience as a part of their course curriculum, really being able to apply those skills or the knowledge that they've learned within the theoretical setting to a real-life project. As our climates continue to change and the impacts of global warming are more heavily felt, it's more important now than ever before to train the next generation of ocean ambassadors, the individuals that are going to be responsible for caring for our oceans, for helping to restore balance within our marine ecosystems. VET accreditations are a valuable tool that can be used to bridge the education gap and reach broad audiences across the world, empowering them through knowledge and skill development to help restore our oceans and the beloved marine creatures that live there. It's like anything, um, our people learn by doing, and so we place them in work placement so that they can acquire the skills because sometimes practical hands-on knowledge actually cements what they're learning in theory and in classroom. Yes, and the great thing about the work placement program is that when they, um, when people produce their CV, rather than saying, oh, all the theory, all the practical I did was during my course, they can actually say, well, I did it during my course, but then I also had work placement. So it's a really great benefit of this course. Our next speaker is Jason Lamont. He's an awesome entrepreneur, but the wonderful thing he is interested in empowering and engaging, but building business. Because without us having businesses um, for people to be employed, Jason's skills is really great. Hi, my name is uh, Jason Lamont. I'm a bit of a business entrepreneur. I've got an indigenous background from Wiradjuri Tribe, Bathurst, New South Wales, the Free Rivers people. Um, I was introduced to Envirotech uh, recently and um, I'd like to share how that uh, I think it's a great uh, passion that they have and a vision for um, restoration of marine environments and uh, habitations. Um, I really think that it would need uh, bless the Indigenous peoples of all nations, all islands, to see the um, collapsing marine stock levels uh, rebuilt with uh, the different systems they have of uh, sea houses for different marine animals or so try and help uh, recover the systems that have been destroyed by um, over fishing or whatever and uh, restoration of uh, uh, coral and uh, to, to regrow what's uh, being bleached and killed out. I think it's important that we engage the uh, Indigenous leadership and uh, get um, the, the program running. Um, the benefit is, is that it's a short course, it's a, a year uh, through VET um, and through engagement with the elders uh, at that community level where we can get the support uh, from the eldership and then the problem is that uh, we need to have trainers that um, are indigenous 
the training uh, our young guys we're having trouble with uh, disengagement of white people training indigenous people so if we can get our people trained up to be able to run this program through we'll get real engagement and hopefully it'll lead to employment and uh, counter the social problems that are happening in our communities so uh, that's at that level so what we'd like to do is um i've got a skill set business background of a lot of business around uh, different places, but we'd like to see the Indigenous uh, business leaders rise up and get engaged with uh, the guys running the program. And we'd really like to see that um, people come out of this to be self-employed and uh, be entrepreneurs themselves. And it's, a, it's, it's teachable. Everything's teachable and learnable. And um, we'd just love to bless our community and um, see us prosper and move forward. So I'd really like to thank EnviroTech for the course that's come from Israel. Uh, to bless the people of the islands. Australia's the largest island in the world, so the islands also. But uh, the Indigenous communities would like to really, um, uh, I'd like to reach out to the brothers and sisters and, um, you know, get on board with us. There's uh, business opportunities that we can uh, take advantage of through uh, what Israel's blessing us with. So if you'd want to partnership with us and, and, and you know, we're one mob united, so we're stronger together. So let's all come together with this and um, support uh, their vision and uh, get on board. Thank you, Jason. We're now going to cross back to David. David's going to talk to us about how you can get involved, how you can support us further. Hi, David Lennon from EnviroTech. We've got some really good news that I wanted to report and let you know about. Um, thanks to the Queensland Government, we're really humbled to find out that our course in Marine Habitat Conservation and Restoration has been selected as a traineeship status. So what that means, um, and to you as an employer, is that if you reskill or upskill an employee by enrolling them in our course, um, the Queensland government will pay up to $7,000 a quarter, you get up to $28,000 um, back um, from the government. It's an absolute massive win for us that we're extremely grateful for the Queensland government for giving us and recognising our course. So our Marine Habitat Conservation and Restoration course is the only one of its kind in the vet sector in Australia. In fact, in the world, there's no other vet sector that offers it. And we're the first. Um, been a, a lot of work to get it to this stage. And, and it's a lot of that traineeship status is thanks to people like yourselves that wrote letters of support. And that's what we're asking for today because we believe it's our responsibility because we've got environmental management a sustainability certificate and our marine habitat um, conservation and restoration certificates and given the state of the planet and the challenges on the marine environment and the environment in general within Australia and overseas we really think um, we need more people trained up that can help help make a positive difference and so that's our passion and that's our mission um, is to get these skills into more hands that can make a positive difference to achieving those international goals of um, tackling climate change and tackling impacts from um, on the environment. Anyway, we'd love your support because we want to take this to other states now. So we've got the traineeship in Queensland and thanks again to the Queensland government for acknowledging the course. Now we'd like to take it to other states um, and we can do that if we get letters of support from industry saying yes the uh, the courses are beneficial and the courses are needed um, we'd be extremely grateful for your support and we've got a pro forma letter so we've taken all the work out of um, doing it you don't have to think about what to say we can send you a pro forma letter and you just fill in the gaps so there's just a couple gaps there on numbers of um, jobs that are out there, the demand for this type of um, certification and th that's all you need to do. Now this is not committing you to anything. Um, we're not going to you know, come back and say well you said that you were going to employ this many. This is hypothetically how many jobs could you provide for our graduates? This is to give the government an idea of how many jobs are out there um, and list it as an essential skill. We really appreciate it. Of course, any questions or if there's anything that we can do for you, more than happy to help. Thanks for your support and thank you very much. Um, and so we thank you for your time, but we really do need your support. If you have a business that's centered around the sea, we know that if you take on one of our recruits, you will have the best 
And so we are asking for letters of support, but we are also asking as businesses to uh, in, you know, take on one of our uh, students uh, in their student placements. And, um, yeah, and I think um, by it's been really exciting listening to everyone. And throughout the session, we've had a lot of questions that have come through. So too many to answer, but we'll answer a few now. And then uh, the rest of the questions will be answered by our team and those who want to get in contact with us um, personally, please feel free to do so. So let's look at a few of the questions. And it's exciting to see so many questions coming through by. Yes, it's so good um, to you know, get people asking really wonderful questions like this one. My son is 15, not enjoying school and can he start now? Well, the answer to that is any student in Queensland who is 15 years or older is allowed to do a certificate qualification. And usually uh, most schools that would start in grade 10, but you can certainly get in contact with us. Um, we'll just go with a couple more. I'm conscious of the time and uh, those people whose questions we don't answer, uh, don't worry, we will send you a message or we'll get in contact with you personally if it's more complex than what we can write in an email. So we had uh, a community, I won't mention the community, um, we had a community who's asked by, can they make an appointment to hear about the possibilities for their community of Indigenous? Wow, that is so awesome because we've got um, Pastor Titong, uh, it's really great to have an elder on board that is passionate about the land and the sea and the people. And so we will uh, get um, back to you and have uh, questions or we'll answer mm -hmm. any questions that you have or if we don't, we'll find out how we can uh, help you. Yeah, we'll, we come up and we like to sit around and have a cuppa, don't we, Vi? Upper and Anatta. Okay, so there's also um, a query here, and I've heard this one quite a lot. Um, a lot of the people in our community have low LLN levels. So for those who aren't um, clear on what that acronym is, that's literacy, uh, language, and numeracy. So if you do have low LLN levels, it's hard to say really fast. Um, the first thing is that it's a certificate two qualification that we'd be looking at the youth doing. And so it is not, um, it's not complex. It's not asking students to write essays. However, we are also working with our course to help develop the LLN levels because we know that the reason that a lot of them have low levels is because they've been disengaged. So we've been able to, through the practical aspects of the course, we've been able to introduce mathematical and literacy concepts. And we're, we're confident that that is going to help their levels increase. That is so awesome. But because it's VET qualifications too, it, they will be recorded. And so sometimes, you know, it's a recorded answer to their mm. questions. Um, that we ask them and that will suffice because they understand it's actually understanding what is expected of them and they do it uh, practically and so that uh, too works hand in hand. But yeah and because that is not about did I get an A or a B it's am I competent or not yet competent and so if you're not yet competent it doesn't mean you fail it just means at this particular point in time you need to develop that skill a little bit further and we'll assist you with that and then you become competent. So it's a very different field of study. Which is great because we take you as you are, mm -hmm. but when you finish it, you will have accomplished something because you enjoy doing it. If you're passionate, please get in touch with us because if you love the sea, then you will want to learn about it and you will be contributing to the planet. Absolutely, and on that, Let's just finish with what sort of practicals someone asked. I'll just give you a quick list. We do underwater photography, on land photography. Uh, we make diversity enhancers, which are little houses to promote you know, fish life and then putting them underwater. Uh, we do snorkeling, make quadrants, monitor and collect data of different marine environments like rocky shores, sand dunes, corals. Uh, you name it. <laughs> it's actually just finding out 
what's there in your community mm. and what was there before so we can restore it back to where it was and that's where we need the el um, the elderly on board mm. because it's you know open to any grandfather grandmother that wants to come and help their grandchildren know what used to be in their seas and it's wonderful for the community it is because the grandparents can let us know what was there the elders and then of course they can then work with the uh, youth with the skills and the scientific skills that we give to be able to like you said restore and it wouldn't be wonderful to have our children be proud of who they are where they come from and what direction that they are going to take because you know what they will take ownership we are wanting to train up an army of uh, young people that are passionate about their country and wouldn't it be wonderful if we can restore our seas or help restore our seas to where it's supposed to be you know Anivai, i couldn't have ended it any better than that so i'm going to end here by saying thank you so much for hosting with me today Oh, thank you to all our speakers and we look forward to hearing from all of you uh, over the next week and we'll be in touch.